everyone, Kristen Moser here, and guess what today is? I get to show you my latest pattern. This is fresh fruit. So what you see here, this cheerful, very summery quilt with the fruit blocks. I've been working on this for a very long time, so I'm really thrilled to finally be able to show you. We're a little early for next season. Um, but I'm looking forward to doing a sew along or a quilt along with this one as well. So what we have are watermelon and strawberries, there's limes and oranges, we've got lemons and there are grapes here and here. Every block is made twice, so it's somewhat of a sampler or like a block of the month. There are six different blocks and you make each one twice. And then there are background fill-in blocks what you see here plus your uh, white background area. So I thought I'd show you how to make one of the blocks, the citrus block. I'll use some orange um, to make an orange block and then I'll show you how to do the background blocks as well. So this whole pattern is designed around the large ruler. So this is the 60 degree diamond ruler by Creative Grids. The large size, that's mainly to make the background blocks. You can do all of the fruit, just the fruit, with the mini ruler. So if that's something you have, then you could absolutely use it for just the fruit blocks. If you want to do the full size quilt with the background blocks, then you would use um, the large. So that's the one I'm going to demonstrate with. And here I have three different oranges. So I actually curated a bundle of fabric, a fat, um, or a jelly roll bundle of fabric with Kona cotton solids something I've never done before, where I actually curated my own collection of Kona cottons, and um, each one of these strips, you get two of each color, and each one is used in this quilt. So I kind of gathered my fruit colors and um, put my special touch in there as far as what I wanted for different fruit. So I'll kind of go through those here in a minute, but what I've got in there are three different oranges. So that's what we have here. So I've got a dark, a medium, and a light. So from your medium one, this is a two and a half inch strip from that jelly roll, I'm going to cut some triangles. So two and a half inch triangles here. I'm just using the nose of the ruler, just, just the small tip. This is why I say you can use the mini ruler for this because it will get you these same sizes. But I'm just cutting two and a half inch triangles here. And then I'm going to turn the ruler to get the next one. Now I'm cutting through two layers, so I actually have four here. And I only need three for each orange. Now I'm going to turn my blocks around, stack them up, and I'm just going to use the flat nose of the ruler to trim the tips off. This is something I've been doing more and more of. It makes a big difference. It really is worth the extra little effort to do this because your pieces just line up so well and you don't have frustration when piecing um, odd size shapes together. Okay, now we've got the dark one here. Now I had trimmed one of my jelly roll strips down to one and a half inches, so that's what I have for the dark one and the lightest one. So what I'm gonna do is cut some trapezoids. So here for the darkest one, I'm gonna line it up with the four and a half inch line. So these are still working on the triangle side of the ruler where the lines march up towards the tip. These are the dashed lines going across. So I've lined it up on the four and a half and the little starboard lines on the other side. Trim on both sides here. Turn the ruler. And now the four and a half inch line comes down from the top. And one more cut, just enough. And I'm going to do like what I did before. I'm gonna put these pieces right on top of each other and trim the little tips off these outside edges here. So here, there's that. And one more, okay. This is just for one um, orange block. All right, my lightest shade. Now this one, it is also trapezoids, but now I'm lining it up on the three and a half inch. So we started with a two and a half inch triangle, we'll move to a three and a half inch trapezoid, and then put the four and a half inch trapezoid on it to make our little orange slices. Okay, and turn it around. These are the same cuts that are used for the lime block and the lemon block. So they're all very similar to each other. Okay. around. 
And all of these cuts that I just showed could have been done with the mini ruler as well. Okay. So here's the way that it's constructed. It's very simple. What you've got, your triangles here, trapezoids, and trapezoids. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew these two together right here with the seam. Now something that I made notes of in the pattern, here's the pattern you see here, it's a booklet form because this is sort of a bigger pattern, a block of the month style sampler. And so one of the things that I have gone to um, showing in my patterns a lot more is where the bias and straight of grain edges will, will fit together best. So you will see under the illustration here, on step nine, where I've got this as a straight of grain, and so is this. And so putting those two together, you won't have to deal with bias edges and stretching away from straight of grain edges if you put these two together like this. So you're gonna sew your seam, and because I went and um, clipped off all those tips, when I go to sew this, I'll turn this piece over, and you have this perfect matchup. You see, no dog ears to, uh, to measure or work with, you've got these these perfect matched flat, flat ends so that you don't have to do any guesswork. Makes for really easy piecing. So you're going to sew these two together. That combination, once sewn, will be something like this. And then you add the bigger one. And there again, the same thing. We've got flat tips out here. So our trapezoid is going to fit on that just perfectly once it's sewn. And that's going to make for really, really flat blocks. So I actually sewed some of those already. And let me show you how they look once they're sewn. So here you have, you're making three of each, just like this. So I've got my um, seams all pressed open. That seems to really help with bulk and making the, everything lay really flat. So I've done that quite a bit now. So if I want my orange slice to be going you know, this way. Now here's my background. You can kind of put it in. So you're building these blocks half and half, like this. So half here and half here. This makes it so you don't have to do Y seams. So when we're going to assemble this whole thing coming together here, if you keep them split like this, no Y seams. So you don't have to contend with those either. Now I can change the direction of this block and just swivel it with doing the same exact pieces to this point. But now I've just turned the direction. So let me show you the rest of the blocks. Here's the way the orange block is going to be, or the citrus block. Now, if you've got that one done, here is the lemon. See how it's going the other direction? That's all I did was just turn the direction of those pieces. Same pieces, same cuts and everything, they just get um, sewn in a slightly different arrangement. So here's the lemons. Here we have the limes. Here we have watermelon. Isn't that cute? Then we have the um, strawberry blocks. And last but not least, we have the grapes, which are my favorite. I just love the grapes. So all of these blocks together, you can see how cute those look together. Aren't they fun? They all come from these different colors. So what I'll show you here, the lemon uses the three colors of yellow. I already showed you the orange, which is these three colors of orange. And now we have three colors of red, three different reds. That makes up the strawberry. And then here we've got some watermelony colors with the green added to it. So there's actually four different greens because your lime block uses three different greens and then the watermelon and some of the leaves for the other blocks use the darkest green. Then we've got the grapes that use the uh, three different shades of purple. I've got some blue because you need some blue sky when you're having a picnic. And then we've got the three greens for the lime block. So there's two strips of each one of those in these jelly rolls and I've got a bunch of them so you are welcome to them. I'll put a uh, link to the, the, these in the description. If you want to make this pattern and use the jelly roll that I curated from Kona Solids, I will provide that. And, um, and then last but not least, so this pattern, it actually has two layouts. So the layout you see behind me is the full size one or the, the um, wall hanging 
This is the lap size one, and then the wall hanging one is just the fruit blocks. It doesn't actually have the background blocks. So here, you see it, where it's just, it's just the fruit. So in this case, I used a blue as my sashing instead of white, like the one behind me, and then just did two of each of the fruit blocks, so it can make a little kitchen wall hanging or something like that. So a fun second layout. Now, if you wanted to do this one, you could do it. Um, you could do it with the mini ruler, so you wouldn't need the large ruler for this one. So why don't I show you one more thing, and that is the background block. So you've got this jelly roll, you've made all your fruit blocks. It doesn't use the entire jelly roll for these fruit blocks. You have some extra, and you don't want to waste them. So here is what I thought could be done with those extras. And that is those background blocks. No waste, right? So you've got some extra strips because you have two of each. So you sew them together. In this case, I did two of my purples together. They are all two and a half inch strips. And this is how we create these extra sort of fill in blocks, which are really kind of fun. So here I sewed two of my purples together. Now I'm going to take the large ruler and I'm going to line up my eight and a half inch triangle line. So this is the dash line coming across the middle here. And then there's a white dash line here across the top, which would be considered like a four inch line. So I'm just going right in between those two on either side of my strip set. And now I'm going to cut and cut and take the little tips off here on the outside. Now I'll turn the ruler and do the exact same thing from the other side. Now the eight and a half inch line goes across the top. And I am just going to trim and trim. And I'll continue to do that. I'll get a few more blocks, but this is how they come together. You see how cute that is? Just little striped hexagons. So that's what we do to create these blocks here and use up the last of your jelly roll. So it makes, uh, makes for a pretty great use of all the fabric in, uh, in, the, in the roll itself. All right, so what I'm gonna do so I'm going to put a link to the Jelly Roll, the pattern, which is called Fresh Fruit Sampler in a booklet form. And it comes with both patterns that I showed you, both layouts, the large one and the small one, all the fruit blocks. And then also, if you want your background and your binding, I used a, um, like a red and white check, kind of a gingham check, like a picnic blanket binding. So we've got that as sort of a secondary add-on to the kit. I'll put a link to that as well. So if you um, want to do the whole thing, the whole layout with the white background and the binding, uh, be sure to look for that. And the pattern will be sold separately so you can kind of decide which way you want to go. I hope you thought this was fun. I'm very happy with this quilt and I'm really excited to share it. And like I said, we're going to do this as a quilt along sometime after the first of the year. So if you like, would like to join in on that, get on the email list at kristamoser.com. Just subscribe and you will get the information for that quilt along when we announce it. Thanks for watching.